Well, life does happen, but I'll tell you what, chances are there was, a, there was an opportunity for that to exist. When you know what you want, you ever really want something bad? A spouse or, you know, a food? <laughs> or or a, a lot of money or a car? You know, you take pictures of the car, you stick it on your refrigerator. You know, you, you get that image of what you want and you know, you know, you know you're going to get it because you want it so bad, you can see it, you can taste it, you can feel it, and then you create it. That's how bad you want, have to want to get to the next level in your practice. You want your practice to grow? You've got to be ready to throw up if you see the same kind of patients this Monday as you saw last Monday. When you get to that throw up point, you will get off your butt and you will make it happen. And don't think that there's a mystery to it. Like, oh, well, she stepped in poop. No wonder she gets a lot of impatience. We want to think, because we're taught, we grew up in this drug era, we want to think that there's randomness to it, or that we're victims. Like you're walking down the street and boom, gallbladder disease hits you, right? Or boom, failure hits you, or this hits you, or that hits you. Things hit you. But if you're focused on what you want, you just, go, you just keep on going. You just go next, and you keep moving along. But if you don't have a vision, if you don't have a goal, you'll start swimming around in the soup of it. And the story of it. And the poor me of it. And then nobody will be, won't want to be around you. Can't grow a practice if you don't want to be around yourself. Patients come to you because they want to be around you. If you don't want to be around you, your staff keeps quitting. They don't want to be around you. Take a look. People are going to want to be around you. And they're not going to want to be around you if you don't feel like you're a lucky duck. That's profound. You need to feel like you're a lucky duck. You need to feel like you're living a lucky life. Like only good company. You can never meet someone like that. Sometimes you're young. Because you get older, you get jaded. But they think like only good is going to happen to them. And they are just blessed. That's a decision they make. That's a decision that they make. You get that? You make a decision to be successful. It isn't random. And then you just go to work and do what you said you're going to do. Or don't. But please, stop whining. <laughs> you, want, you want something different in your life, in your practice? Write it down. Write what you want. Why did you come here this weekend? Did you come for the fellowship? I definitely did. Did you come for, for, for the community? I definitely did. But I, I, I got bigger ideas. I want my practice to jump 100 visits before the next movie begins. 100 visits a week. You want that? Yeah. Am I scaring you? You got a rash? <laughs> How bad do you want it? Bad enough to create it? Or do you just want to talk about it or you don't even want to talk about it? Am I making you a little uncomfortable? <laughs> get out of the sky for a minute and, and get down onto a piece of paper and tell me what, what you're made of. Show me what you're made of. Not because I come here because I'm, inter I'm interested in you making more money or seeing I'm interested in you seeing more people. I'm interested in being part of that paradigm shift. I'm interested in people understanding that they have a choice. I remember one time, I tell this story often, but it, I only think of it when I'm speaking because it, it hit me so profoundly. I was watching the, te the, the Jerry Lewis telethon. I was flipping through the channels, and there was this woman, and she came on, and she was talking about her kid, and her kid had a disease. They all blur together. <laughs> it was a disease, right? You ever have to talk to you, and you're trying to be polite. Yeah. Don't ever yawn. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want a lot of really good effects, on the other side, you put up your x-rays, you take a look at it, and you go, oh. <laughs> it's not how much you say. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, this woman, my, my son told me the other day that I gotta learn to stop laughing before I tell the jokes. <laughs>
know, child was, you know, ravished with it, muscular or whatever. And in my mind, I was thinking, she probably never got her adjusted. That ignorant woman. How stupid is that? Why do people do this to me? <laughs> they get on TV, they say such stupid things. I have a 12-year-old daughter that talks to our TV. <laughs> they'll get on drug commercials and they'll say the side effects and she'll go, how stupid do you have to be? To <laughs> Why do they brag about the side effects, right? Like, like it's okay if you have them because they're, not, they're disclosing them, you know? Your, your son, does he talk to the TV? My, my daughter, and she'll go, drugs, 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 change the channel. <laughs> <laughs> now, anyway, poor woman, right? She's on TV and I'm thinking all these bad thoughts of her and then I thought, oh man, chances are nobody told her the story. I definitely did. And if I did, I didn't remember I did. <laughs> <laughs>